Hey everyone, I'm Ryan with Marine Parts Source and I wanted to showcase another really cool project that we did at our Specialty Services Center up in Port Huron, Michigan. If you've been watching this channel at all, you know that Marine Parts Source Specialty Services is our shop where we can conduct all kinds of cool projects. This project was particularly interesting because it was unexpected. The customer walked in off the street, he hadn't called before, we had never met him before, but he had an older pontoon boat and he wanted to do a repower on it. He had an older four-stroke outboard that was giving him a lot of trouble. Fortunately, as a Suzuki Repower Center, we had the perfect solution for him. A brand new 40 horsepower Suzuki outboard motor that we could put on that pontoon and immediately give it a significant upgrade in performance. So the first step in any kind of repower project is to derig the old system. So taking off the old motor, taking off the controls and cables, the gauges, all of that. When we got to doing this, the old motor was just mounted to basically a piece of wood that had been put onto the boat at some point in its past. Really wasn't safe, really not the right way to do things at all. So we made the decision very quickly that we were going to completely replace this transom mount with something that could be reliable and strong enough to hold a brand new engine. What we did was we took two pieces of marine ply and we made a template from that old transom mount, cut those pieces out, and then we epoxied them together so that they would have the right amount of thickness and the right strength to be able to hold this new motor. After these things were put together, we were able to put this new transom mount onto the boat and fix it in a way that it would be secure and that we could be confident that when we mounted that new engine, it was gonna hold. Next step was to put on a new control and this boat was full of surprises. The old control was just mounted to a rail on the boat, really not secure in any kind of way, not really the right way to do things at all. So we decided to make a new back plate for our new control. Then once we had that ready, we riveted it to the boat so that it would be secure. There'd be no jostling around. It would hold that control in place tightly. So once we had that, all that in place, then it was time to move on to actually mounting the motor. One of the most fun steps of a project like this is getting to unbox a brand new motor, taking a brand new 40 horsepower Suzuki out of the box, it's so shiny and clean, it looks great. And it was time to mount it onto that brand new transom mount that we had created. But we have to make sure that we measure and measure again, and then check that measurement a third time, make sure we get it right. What we're measuring for is to find the center line of the boat so we know exactly where that motor is supposed to go. Once we have that center line defined, then we just need to lift the motor up and make sure that we mount it on there exactly to line up with that center line that we've measured. And so then from there, we're just mounting that engine onto the brand new transom mount and it is secure. Hey everyone, if you're looking for the absolute best solution for securing your boat to the trailer, look no further than Boat Buckles G2 retracting ratcheting tie downs. These things are permanently mounted to your trailer. They're incredibly strong. They're gonna keep your boat secure as you're moving down the road. So check them out on marinepartsource.com and get them today. Next step in the project is to connect all of the steering. We got lucky with this particular project because the steering cables were actually in pretty good shape. We were able to reuse them. So we didn't have to go to the business of uninstalling the cables and running brand uh, new cables all through the boat. That can be a pain. So that saved us some time. We were able to just run these new cables through the tilt tube of the engine, connect them up, and then also connect the steering armature. After that, we wanted to get into the dash, put in all these new gauges. And for the most part, the gauges all fit perfectly with the old cutouts on the dash. But the tachometer needed a custom fit. So we built a new bezel for that tachometer to fit on put those gauges all on the dash. At the same time that we're doing that, we also threaded all the harnesses for the gauges through the boat and up to the dash and also the control cables through the boat to that control panel. So once again, this boat was full of all kinds of surprises, one of which is that it didn't have any fuel tank whatsoever. I'm not really sure how this pontoon got around anywhere without a fuel tank, but nonetheless, we had to put a new one on the boat. We've got specialty fuel tank straps to mount these tanks down, make sure that they stay in place, they don't jostle around while the boat's in motion. And then we had to connect up the fuel lines and we wanted to make sure and run them from the tank to an actual remote fuel water separator filter. That's really important to have to make sure that you keep your fuel system clean, keep all the gunk out of your engine, protect the engine, keep it running for a long time. And a remote fuel water separator is almost a necessity in most boats these days, just to keep that fuel system clean, keep all the stuff that ethanol can bring with it out of your engine. Connecting to the battery was the next step. And that's not a 
very complicated step. You just run some battery cable from the engine to the battery. We always run it through a rigging tube that's gonna help to protect the electrical wire, keep any water intrusion out. It's kind of like rule 101 of boating is you know, to keep the water and the electrical separate. We're just about done with the installation at this point. We just put on a new propeller and then we wanna run the engine for a little bit of time to help break it in. So what we did is while we were in the shop, just connect a garden hose to the engine to run some water through it and run it at idle for about 45 minutes. And when we did that, we didn't notice any issues. There was no overheating, no control issues. Everything looked to be working properly. So next we get to the step that's every technician's favorite part. We get to go for a boat ride. So when we're out on sea trials, we like to just use all our senses to make sure that everything is working properly and as we expect for the boat. Watching for anything that might be unusual, listening for any unusual sounds, even smelling for things that might be burning. When we're on sea trial, what we're really checking for is to make sure that things are throttling up correctly, that it, the engine is shifting properly, and we're also gonna run it wide open throttle, make sure we can get all the way to wide open and there's no issues there. In this particular instance, when we had the pontoon out, we tried to run it wide open, we noticed that we would hit the rev limiter before we could get it all the way up. That's an indication that perhaps the prop wasn't the right size. So we took the boat back to the shop, took off that propeller that we put on it, and decided to go a little bit bigger, a little bit larger diameter, a little bit smaller pitch, put that new prop on, and then took the pontoon back out in the water, and then we were able to run it wide open. It got there with no issues, ran really smooth as the top. We knew this boat was ready. At that point, project's done, turn it over to the customer. They've got this pontoon with an upgraded engine, new gauges, new control, and they're ready. They're ready for the summer. So that was a really fun project for our guys up in specialty services in Port Huron, Michigan. Again, if you're in that area and you've got a boat that you're looking to do a special project on, give those guys a call. They are masters of their field and they can do all kinds of cool projects and help you to make your boat the boat of your dreams. And as always, if you're looking for parts and equipment for your boat, then just head on over to marinepartssource.com. We've got thousands of boat parts and our folks there have decades of expertise in helping you to find exactly what you need for your application. As always, we appreciate you watching this video. Feel free to leave comments and questions down below. And as always, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.